it's been a while since I've done um, just a basic biology of beaver video, so I thought now would be a good time with a little tulip here. So beavers have a very poor eyesight, um, but they can see in color. So the eyes are um, clearly, there's a use for them being able to see in color sort of makes sense, but they are very nearsighted, so they do not see things far away. They rely on their sense of smell and their hearing. And so they have these cute, adorable little furry ears that have a valve or a flap inside that closes up when they're swimming to keep water out of the inner ear. Their adorable little nose, so cute. Their sense of smell is incredible. They have, uh, I would say their sense of smell followed by hearing are the most acute senses. Um, they, I believe, have a sense of taste, although I'm not 100% sure about that. It's something we need to, to look into or I need to read about. Um, they have orange toofers, orange teeth, yay! Orange teeth because there's iron in the enamel, which makes them nice and strong for chopping down trees. The other thing that they do is they, they grind their teeth uh, on their own, which helps keep them uh, chiseled and sharp. And so uh, you will uh, hear uh, the beavers doing this teeth grinding motion, and that is because they are keeping them worn down and sharp. So although they definitely need plenty of access to trees and branches, um, they, do, they are able to wear down their teeth on their own. They have these incredible rear flippers and on the rear flipper, I'll show you right here, they have a preening toe, they call it, and it's basically a comb that they use to comb out their fur. Grooming is such an important part of beaver life. Uh, keeping this fur clean and groomed is critical to their survival. They have some of the thickest fur in all of the animal kingdom and these uh, outside guard hairs and then on the inside is this fine downy uh, layer and you're not supposed to be able to see a um, beaver skin whenever you pull this hair apart so what you're seeing there is just that fine downy layer now because tulip had a back injury there's a little spot right up here where you can actually see her skin and that is dangerous for a beaver out in the cold because it it prevents them from properly thermoregulating because she can feel wetness on her skin we just have to be very careful in cooler weather uh, that she doesn't get uh, super cold but it's just a couple of little spots remaining they also have um, these adorable little little hands and they have an oil gland that they use to uh, put oil in their fur to help keep it um, waterproof. And so part of the grooming is keeping it all combed out and then the rest of it is putting that oil in there. Um, let me see your pretty little tail. So these tails are remarkable. They are flexible. There is a vertebra that goes all the way down to the bottom and they are very powerful. They use it numerous ways, including uh, using it for a balance whenever they're on land grooming. Uh, they use it as a, um, to help steer in the water. And they do slap that tail on the water surface uh, as a warning. They also have just ever so slight little fur here on the edges. And um, this is something that you find in babies and it seems to wear down with adults. Their tail is a source of fat storage for them over the winter. And um, Tulip is definitely getting there, um, although her tail is a little bit behind in growth. There's also a fat pad down here in this area that um, also serves as a fat storage area. Tulip is in really good body condition as far as um, her weight. And we do uh, believe that she is a little bit stunted and she may not ever reach a full size beaver. And this is because of all those challenges she had whenever her skeleton was growing. And the latest x-rays show that all the growth plates have sealed up. So we do not believe she's gonna get a whole lot bigger 
um, although she can certainly get bigger as far as fat. And I'm very curious to see if she can get a full-size tail. Um, Tulip's nerves on her back are really sensitive. And so this behavior that you see her do, um, she likes for us to scratch her back. She scratches her back, but it is clearly uh, stimulating some nerves there. And so this is something that we're keeping an eye on and um, hopefully over time these will settle out so that she isn't quite so sensitive. Um, but this was quite a traumatic infection that she had on her back. So um, it's gonna take some time to fully heal up. Beavers have several vocalizations that they do. And Tulip has this little vocal that like what she's doing right now is she wants to play. Uh, she wants me to, to wrestle and play with her. Uh, this, little, this little motion here is for that. She also has a greeting call that whenever she sees me um, after I've been gone for a bit, she does this little, little contact greeting call that's super cute. And uh, they also do a hiss sound. If they are upset or scared or worried, they can do a very deep hissing noise that um, is used to, to show that that's a warning that they are not happy. I've had a few folks ask what their fur feels like. It is absolutely some of the softest fur that I've ever felt uh, on an animal. It's incredibly soft and thick, and the tail feels like leather, literally like a leather belt. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Silly goose! Why is Tulip in the house? Uh, for those of you who have followed uh, Tulip's story for a while, you understand. Uh, for the, those of you who are new, Tulip uh, needs socialization, and we are essentially acting as her parents and as her guardians and siblings, and uh, spending time inside the house, outside the house, is just part of that social structure that we've established for her. And um, beavers are very social animals, and of course, ideally, you want them to be with other beavers. Uh, in absence of other beavers right now, uh, Tulip is uh, hanging out with us. If we get new orphans in the spring, Tulip is going to be an excellent candidate to be with younger beavers. Um, so uh, that is our hope for Tulip moving into the spring is that we're able to get um, an orphan. Obviously, we hope we never get another orphan, but if we do, um, that's going to be a really good candidate for, for Tulip to have another beaver. This is Pluto. We have Pluto, Mars, and Neptune, our, our rescue cats. And Pluto is telling me right now that it is time for dinner. You're starving, aren't you? I can tell. Okay. Tulip's gonna take a nap. <laughs>